Welcome to Deep Thought, the power of charismatic leadership. And let me address something before I go any further, because I know a couple people had said something about, uh, well, doing uh, live videos and everything. Um, as I had said, like, a while ago, I was going in that direction anyway. Because I know how people think. Somebody, somebody think they might have influenced me. And if anybody who's following me a while, no. I do stuff on my own time when I'm good and ready. And it's just it's, it's the time now. It's the time. Didn't do a lot at my other place. Well, yeah, got a lot, I had a lot of noise outside of where I live. It's relatively quiet over here. So, anyway, to get that part out of the way, the power of charismatic leadership. And as you know, always on this channel is about thinking. It's, it's really about thinking about stuff. I was thinking about it recently. I'm not going to call any names. I don't need any unnecessary attention. But if you look, but this is something that's been throughout human history. It's been really shaped by the actions of charismatic leaders. Now, I know some people say, well, the people think of stuff. And people do, but who really brings them together? See, on a major level, on a major level, people are heard. People are heard. People just follow and they follow along. They might think that they're independent in, in all of their actions, but on, a, on one level, yes, everybody's an individual, but let's be real. Most people are followers. They're built to be followers. Most people are followers. They will follow if somebody, if somebody whatever like if somebody came out with a hairstyle like say the hairstyle mean you had a circle up on top and somebody popular especially somebody charismatic style wearing that hair like that i i guarantee within six months maybe even soon you'll get a critical mass of people wearing their hair the same way or they clothes a certain way and i want y'all to think about that that's more about people follow and they follow the styles a lot of people will wear something not because they like it personally but because someone else is doing it like men sagging their pants or wearing skinny jeans a lot of guys wouldn't do that on their own now then again and then you do have a small portion of people they follow their own they follow their own um, their own desires their own needs they walk to the beat of their own drummer so there's always exceptions, but I would say the majority of people, like the 5% nation of Islam, the 5 percenters, they would say, you know, it's 85% uh, of people are deaf, dumb, and blind, and you got 10% who are controlling them, then you got the poor, righteous teachers, the 5% who are free. And I'm going to tell you what, in different systems, there's always that way. In the uh, Medo Neter, uh, by uh, Shechem on Shechem, Ron Nefarim Men, he talks about three levels of men. And that's always been a constant thing. But I don't want to get too deep into that. I want to just focus on the charismatic leadership because it's that charismatic leader that focus, that is the focal point of the herd. They will follow that person or certain herds. Um, of course, we got several herds out here, several groups. And I've talked about that last week. You have different tribes fighting for power. But then all you need is that one leader. Uh, I'll use the example in the civil American Civil Rights Movement. Uh, MLK, you know, he wasn't the first person to come up with everything. Even the March on Washington, even the March on Washington, that was going, according to uh, Malcolm X in his autobiography, um, he said people were going to come anyway. But then King became a, a focal point. Now people could argue that was manipulated by the government. Okay. And yes, it was there, but if you look on many levels, he became the focal point, even to the point of becoming dangerous to the government when he went beyond mere civil rights and started talking about economic empowerment, not just for black people, but poor whites as well. It makes a difference. See, I'm gonna tell you what, the man or woman, well, it's usually a man, I'm just, I'm not being sexist or anything, but it's rare to find that woman who could truly move a mass of people like that. I'm sure they exist. And if y'all know of one who's truly did that, hey, put some in the description box. But um, the thing is, when you get that type of person, they can bring about change because then the herd changes what they do. 
let me use the example of the hairpiece. Say you get somebody charismatic, they wear just one little top up here. You change it many things, hairstyles, everything, even clothing styles, even behavior. That's powerful. Think, I want y'all to think about that. Think about that. You get that charismatic person. They can change political systems. If even the, most of the world, in fact, in most of the world, and I'm not getting into the current thing happening in American politics now. Like I said, there's certain attention I don't need to draw, and I don't feel like arguing on certain things. But honestly, in most of the world, it's led. Well, a significant part. I ain't going to say most. A significant part is led by a charismatic leader. And then if you look at spiritual systems, you look at churches, charisma, charisma. And then they influence the herd because the herd is a followers. Now, of course, they don't influence those who just walk to their own beat, the creatives, the creative type of people who say, you know, I'm just one of them wearing everything. But they're powerful in themselves. But, and, you know, and, you know, if you have a charismatic leader is good. Hey, that's great for change. That is great for change. And it's something to think about. I want you all to think about that. Think about it. If you look at look at movements, it's usually a focal point. Look at any movement, any change. It's that one person who who came out, who came out for something. I can think of some movements now that will really get big if someone uh, big were to really adopt it. And that's just the nature. It's a deeper science behind it. I'm not going to get into it. It's actually a deeper thing back there. But there's some stuff I'm not going to share. But it's something you, that you can still see, whether you believe there's a deep science or not. Look, you just pay attention to movements, pay attention to styles, everything. Indeed, I'm going to tell you what, you had some people in power and people like maybe with a lot of money or something. Uh, I'll say corporate, corporate. If you notice when um, these corporations who are selling something, they want to promote something, they just get a superstar to do it. Because even though there's, there, there may be different levels of charisma, but if you have a superstar who promotes a product, they'll pay them too. People will buy. That's why you sometimes you might have some person who, like in movies, they might be uh, maybe want to sell a product or something, have some charismatic person do it. Because it is a part of magnetism. In fact, uh, Charisma in old school psychic books talking about psychic abilities is considered it a psychic ability. It's something. Now, for whatever reason that they don't anymore, it's, I, I'm not sure. I don't, maybe they came to a new thing or maybe like many things that used to be in the public eye was removed to dumb down people. Oh, once again, another conversation. Yeah. I might be on camera for a deep thought, but we still go on thinking, you know, we're going to still go on the flow. There's so much to think. But that's a powerful thing. Like, if you really want change, people think you need a major, some people think you need a major organization or something, but really change can come down just to a handful of people who decide to move in a certain way, and because of the power of their charisma, people will follow I want y'all to think about that. I want y'all to think about that. As always, think about it. Think about who, like movements you've seen where someone's very charismatic. It's the power of their charisma that's moving a lot of things. Because a charismatic person can even influence how a person thinks. Even if it don't seem like it makes sense to somebody who's not <laughs> under the spell of that charismatic person. Mm, spell. Perhaps that's why some old school books considered them um, it's considered a psychic ability. Mm. It's something to think about. It's something to think about. In fact, there was a science fiction book uh, where the uh, main characters, the protagonist and antagonist, uh, had psychic ability, and one of them was magnetism. One of them was magnetism. So, anyway. There's always something to think about. And incidentally, and I've said this on my other channels, when I do these vi every weekly video, I don't feel like changing shirts for every single one. I don't have them. Actually, I do, but then you got to wash and all of that and hang it up. I was like, man, I ain't doing all of that. So I'll be in this for the next couple of videos. So weekly, I'll change my... I'll change my shirt on a weekly basis because uh, just real quick, I'll be recording these videos back to back, you know, 
you know, 10 minute, 10, 15 minute videos. They'll be a little bit longer too, cause I'm flowing, but 10, 15 minute videos, I do them in one sitting. Anyway, cause even though I can tell people I'm introverted and stuff, I can talk. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want y'all to think about what I was saying though. Think about examples of charismatic leadership and how movements would come down to one person who could really move the herd. And in fact, I would say that one person, let me just flow, you know, I'm gonna flow with it when I'm speaking in front of you. Um, Cause it's like I'm talking with somebody, but I'm gonna tell you what, that's more powerful. A person, a, a single individual that can move a mass of people is probably more one of the most powerful weapons in the history of the planet. Even more powerful than a nuclear weapon. Despite the radiation, despite the death, you can rebuild things exactly, almost exactly as they were after a nuclear explosion. Yeah, you got radiation and all that stuff, but, um, you know, but if you can change, if you can move the masses, that changes things on a major scale. Major. You change it in the very direction of humanity. I want you to think about that. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Get back with y'all. Peace and blessings.